saying that Allah will not forgive. It should. And he says so in the Quran. But you know the traffic jams in here, people don't have time for the Quran. <laughs> Too much traffic jam. Where, is it? Where are you going to get the time to study the Quran? So we live and we die without knowing what Allah says in the Quran about shit. But this is not our topic tonight, about the shirk of the political system. Our topic tonight is about his deadliest weapon. The Prophet said that the last people to come out in the jail will be women. That's a formidable weapon. Oh yes. If he can corrupt the woman, that's it. All fall down. But that's not our topic tonight, the feminist revolution. That's not his deadliest weapon. His deadliest weapon is that with which he enslaves you. And when you enslave, you no longer have your independence, you no longer have your freedom, you no longer have your power to resist it. How does he enslave you? It is with riba. Do not, do not attempt to study the subject of riba as a mere economic problem. Do not confine your study of the subject of riba to one which will be studied with the tools of economic analysis. No, you're not going to get through. You've got to locate the subject in a bigger framework. And that is Islamic eschatology, which is what we started with. What is riba? I don't need more than Three, four minutes to answer that question? That's all I need. Three or four minutes and I can tell you what is riba. I don't need a whole volume like this. Riba is borrowing and lending money on what today is called interest. That's finished, that's it. Allah has prohibited money lending on interest. In any transaction involving an exchange of money, which is of course, you go to the bank and you know what is an exchange of money. Once it is the same money which is being used, the Prophet said it must be equal for equal. You cannot have an unequal exchange of money. That the bank gives me or lends me 1,000 ringgits and I am obliged to return to the bank 2,000 ringgits, which is a loan and interest, you understand? The Prophet has prohibited money lending on interest. He has cursed all four. And if you die with the curse of the Prophet upon you, I can tell you what can happen to you in the grave. If you have not had dinner as yet, I suggest skip dinner tonight because the dinner won't digest. He cursed the one who gave the river. He cursed the ones who takes the riba. He cursed the ones who record the transaction. <coughs> and he cursed the two witnesses. And he said they are all equally guilty. And if you die with that sin of riba, what can be the punishment in the grave? No, let me spoil you the number. In Surah Al-Zumar, Allah says, Allah yatawaffa l'anfusa hina mawtiha wa lathi lam tabut fi manamina fa yumsiku lathi qada alayha al-mawt wa yursilu al-ukhra ila ajal al-musamma Allah takes the souls 
when it is a time of mouth. Mouth. Which is, which is death. Mouth is death. And those who do not die while you are awake, Allah takes your souls while you are asleep. He then keeps those souls for which for whom mouth is written. And the rest he sends them back for a prescribed period of time. But during the time that the soul is out of the body, you are not dead. No! No matter how long he keeps the soul out of the body, that body will not decompose. No, you're not dead. But there is no, no medical evidence that you're alive. Hmm? So, the fellow who was the money lender put his money in fixed deposit and looking to see where he could get the best returns and so on, and he dies. So he dies with the curse of Muhammad alayhi salatu salam on him. What can be the punishment for him in the grave? Allah takes his soul. So everybody thinks he's dead. No sign of life. So they give the body the ghusl and they clothe the body and then they perform the salatul janazah. Not knowing the man is not dead. That's his punishment. That's his punishment. And then they take the body to the cemetery and they bury him. <coughs> not knowing that he is not dead. There is no way at all that you can tell that that man is not dead. Now, this is the power of God. And after the last person has gone some distance from the grave, then the soul is returned to the body. So this fellow opens his eyes. Because the receipt for the fixed deposit is searching for it, it's not there in his pocket. <laughs> the place is dark. What happened? Calls out to his wife, no answer. Where did she go? He tries to get up. Can't get up. Where am I? He begins to panic now. He doesn't know. He's confused. Because there's utter darkness. And then he realizes, what is this strange smell? The camphor that you put, you know, the dead body when you wash it. And what kind of clothes do I have? I'm happy. I didn't go to sleep with this clothes. And he begins to feel and feel and feel and feel. And of course, he didn't put a cell phone. Right? <laughs> but <laughs> And then slowly, 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 he realizes that he's in his own grave. Now, you will know what is Allah's punishment. You forget all the traffic jams in here now. So, the Prophet Islam, cursed all four. Why does he curse them? Why has Allah prohibited borrowing and lending money on him? The answer is so simple, you don't need more than a few minutes to answer that. Because Allah Himself answers the question. First of all, He introduces His answer with a contrast. The contrast is between riba and charity. min riban. Allah. 